All right, uh, good morning and welcome to this morning's class. Um, thank you for being a part of the session. We will pray and uh, get into what we are going to learn uh, regarding the subject of faith. So let's start with a word of prayer. Uh, I'll just lead us in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word in our lives. Father, we thank you for, Lord, your grace um, and strength with which you are leading us and guiding us. Father, even as we uh, spend time in your word, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will just bring it alive, make it alive uh, to us, Father God, that um, we may continue to be firm and anchored in the things of the kingdom. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for um, your presence. Uh, we commit the rest of the time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, we're talking about uh, faith. And uh, we saw how in the ministry of Jesus, uh, Jesus taught us insights about faith. He helped uh, us understand what faith is, how to apply faith uh, in our lives. And we also saw how, um, uh, you know, we must uh, engage or we must have faith in our hearts. And when we apply it, we will see mighty things. So there are many aspects that we have discussed. But today, what we will touch upon is uh, two things. One is faith in the Old Testament. So, so far, we saw the Gospels where Jesus is speaking about faith. Jesus is teaching about faith. Jesus is walking in faith. Um, and uh, several incidents in the life of Jesus. So all of that is in the New Testament. But what about the Old Testament? Are there any incidents? Are there any, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, life experiences of people that tell us that they also walked in faith? Uh, well, we have... Uh, an entire passage in the New Testament, which is Hebrews chapter 11, that talks about the faith journey of people in the Old Testament. So when we look at uh, the passage in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, Habakkuk in the Old Testament is a book, you know, if you want to turn to it, but we have that right here in our notes that scripture from Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 which says behold the proud his soul is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith so in the Old Testament there is a mention of this word called as faith we may think that faith is only mentioned in the New Testament but even in the Old Testament the word faith has been used but the other word that we see uh, used most often is the word believed. So instead of faith, which directly tells us uh, about applying faith, the word believed is used. Now we, we know that believe is what? Believe is to have faith, isn't it? So there are people in the Old Testament who have walked in faith, who have believed in God. So let's just see. Uh, who are some of these people? What is it that they were able to accomplish through their lives? So Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 40. Um, it's quite a long passage. So I'm just thinking how we are going to read this. Okay, I'm not sure if we can pass the mic around uh, to a uh, big distance. Okay. Okay, Nonsin, can you read 10 verses? Will you be able to read 10 verses? Yeah? Read 10 verses. Then we can have somebody online. Um, maybe, uh, I'll just call out names, then it's easier. At least you are prepared. So, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Nonsin will read from verse 11 to verse 20. Okay. We can have uh, anyone here. Maybe uh, Esther, Esther uh, Clement. Sister, is that okay? Can you read 10 verses? Okay, oh, yes, she says, okay she says yes. Uh, then verse 21 to verse 30. One more person. 
Who will read? Mike can come. Okay, who who would like to read? You can volunteer. Anyone? Diksha. Okay. Diksha will read. The I can read, sister. Okay. Um, so Diksha will read from verse twenty-one to verse thirty, and uh, sister Gertrude, you can read the last portion. Is that okay? Yeah. I think we have divided it. So let's start. Just read slowly so that we can understand what it says. And through it he being that still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God had taken him. For before he was taken he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen yet, not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and become heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in a tent with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he went for a city which was foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nan Singh. So we have seen this passage that explains what faith is. Okay, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the definition of faith. And then what does it say? It says, For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. So basically, what it's saying is, elders is who? Elders is all these people who have been listed and maybe even others who are not listed here. But what is the testimony of their lives? What is the testimony? They had faith. Okay, even though in the Old Testament you don't find such a sentence where it says uh, Noah walked by faith or um, uh, Jacob walked by faith, you won't see a sentence like that because that word faith is not directly used. But we can understand from their lives that they believed. Now, how can we understand from their life that they believed? Yeah. Okay, God spoke to them. God spoke to them, that's right. Anything more that tells us that these people believed in God, they believed in the promise of God? Just think of all their lives. Right now, in this passage, we've heard some names. Uh, Abel, Noah, Abraham. So, how can we tell that these people believed in God? What? What is it about their life that makes us understand these people believed in God? They obeyed God. Then? Okay, here also in the comments, it's um, Lucy says they obeyed when God asked them to do something. Okay, they obeyed God. 
I couldn't hear you. Have a uh, relationship? A little bit louder. Okay, just a little. By action. Okay, very good. That's true. So, see, we could, by looking at somebody's life, how can we tell whether they had faith or not? Because the actions that they took, that tells us what they had in their heart. For example, Abel. It says, what does it say about Abel? Verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Okay. Think about this. Abel in the Bible. right? You don't read about him after Genesis. Only once Cain and Abel, you know, they made the sacrifices. Cain killed Abel. That's all. We don't know anything more about Abel in the Bible. Right? But in Hebrews chapter 11, which is talking about faith, it mentions the name of this man called as Abel. Why? Because God, remember we said God can recognize faith. Where is faith? Faith is in the heart. So when God looks at people, he knows who is carrying faith in their hearts. That is why when we look at the life of Abel, God understood that this man Abel, in what he did, we only read about him making a sacrifice, only one activity. It's not like, you know, a story um, like Paul. Paul, did, Paul had so many missionary journeys. He established so many churches. He raised up so many leaders. Nothing much compared to Paul is written. In the Bible, only one sacrifice. Only one. But what is so special? He did only one thing that was recorded, but he did it with faith. You got it? So that's so important that God did not uh, talk about the number of things that people have done. He did one thing, sacrifice. At least one thing that's recorded here. But God knew, here is a man of faith. Whatever he is doing, he is doing with faith. Isn't it? So, both Cain and Abel gave sacrifice. But why did God accept the sacrifice of uh, Abel? And Cain's was rejected. Not because, you know, what they brought to God, that is not the issue. The issue was, was their faith in the sacrifice. This is the same way in which God works today. When he looks at our lives, maybe I'm doing one small thing, very small thing. But even in that small thing, what does God notice? Faith. Isn't it? That is what we understand from the life of Abel. Why is Abel mentioned? In Hebrews chapter 11, that man did only one uh, so-called recorded thing, which is to make a sacrifice to God. But faith of Abel is what pleased God. Okay, so think like that. God is recognizing faith. And there are people, men and women of God, noticed in the Old Testament, whom God is praising or commending for their faith. So Abel, a man of faith, who else is there? Let's look, Enoch. It says Enoch. How much do we read about Enoch in the Bible? Anyone? Are we reading our Bibles? In the? Yeah, just one or two sentences. What does it say? Enoch walked with God. Okay, and then, uh, you know, God um, took him. That's all. But again, what is so special about Enoch? Man of faith. So unless he had faith, he would not fellowship so deeply with God. So God is recognizing that. And he's saying, again, Enoch, a man of faith. Enoch walked with God. Right? Um, and uh, uh, continues to say in verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. 
so what does it mean that without faith it is impossible to please god it simply means that when we want to please god with our lives with every offering that we give what are all the offerings uh, our praises um, our obedience our uh, you know giving to god and our uh, commitment to the things that god has called us to do so all these things the question is am i doing it just like that or am i doing it with faith because god can recognize so if i want my life to be pleasing to god in everything everything i must do it with faith faith pleases god without faith it is impossible to please god so if i do something in some activity um i engage in some ministry but i don't have any faith in my heart god actually doesn't like that you know when we are functioning in unbelief doubt he doesn't like that but when we are functioning in faith he's very happy about it so that is why even though there are people like abel and enoch who don't have great accomplishments in scriptures we still talk about them because whatever little they seem to have done they did it with faith and god never forgot isn't it he never forgot abel enoch he remembered their names and it got included in the new testament when god was trying to explain to us about faith okay who are the other names here let's notice noah okay so what is so special about noah how did he demonstrate his faith you know noah no the man who built the ark godly yeah so what is so special about him? yes yes sister with godly fear he demonstrated um, his faith with could godly you please come fear again? okay okay sure thank you so um, sister gertrude says uh, he demonstrated his faith with godly fear that's true um what about the actions of actions of noah what did he do yeah so he built an ark in response to god's instruction it's only if he believed that what god said is true that he would need to build an ark because till that time you don't really read about a rain you don't really read about floods isn't it so uh when god told him there is going to be a flood i'm going to destroy the whole world it would have taken faith why because you know faith is about the unseen things nobody has ever seen a flood before that but when god told noah there is going to be a flood he believed he just believed god and it's not easy to build the ark that he built you know the dimensions of the ark if you just go and study that a little bit it was a huge vessel a huge ship that he had to build so you can think about the life of noah that faith was not for one moment it would have taken him months or you know so many uh, days to actually build that that ark lot of effort daily you can imagine him going and you know sitting and um, uh, sort of nailing the wood on the ark and uh, continuing to to build it the way god wanted it people would have laughed at him and said what are you doing what is a flood we don't know what a flood is so he would have experienced shame from the community for what he believed but he continued to do it he trusted in god he believed god he obeyed god he had the fear of god if god said it he will do it i better have this ship ready okay so that is the example of noah and there were sinful people around him right it, we don't find that noah went and he preached to the people nothing just by his life example people around him were convicted uh, or people around him felt that you know um uh, they see it says by which he condemned the world how did noah condemn he didn't go around telling everybody you are wrong you are wrong you are wrong he didn't do that but when he lived his life by faith that automatically even though he never said a word 
people around him were condemned for the uh, wrong that they were living in so a good testimony a good life uh, is very very important and that through faith now let's move on the next person who is talked about here is abraham so it says abraham what did he do couple of things are mentioned here but we will learn more about abraham in the next chapter it says by faith abraham obeyed and he went right not knowing where he was going so obviously he also believed because unless somebody believes how can you leave everything which you have and then go to a place where god is calling you now when we look at uh, the life of abraham and his background he seems to be quite a wealthy man meaning quite rich so when somebody is rich when somebody is very comfortable why would they leave what they have to go in search of something else only because of faith abraham was willing to go uh, to the place that god had promised to him so that is the faith journey of abraham so he went he went in search of that promised land and um, um yeah he trusted in god because god is the one who is the builder right of of uh, um the eternal city so now let us read from verse 11 to verse 20 um sister esther esther clement yes sister yeah hebrews chapter 11 verse from 11 by faith abraham even though he was past age and sarah herself was barren was enabled to become a father because he considered himself faithful who had made the promise and so from this one man and he is as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore all these people were still living by faith when they died they did not receive the things promised they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own if they had been thinking of the country they had left they would have had the opportunity to return instead they were longing for a better country a heavenly one therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them by faith abraham when god tested him offered isaac as a sacrifice he who had received the promise was about to sacrifice his one and only son even though god had said to him it is through isaac that your offspring will be reckoned abraham reasoned that god could raise the dead and figuratively speaking he did receive isaac back from death by faith isaac blessed jacob and esau in regard to their future okay thank you thank you so much um so we see the life of abraham uh, over here and then you know towards the end how he is blessing jacob and esau so when we consider the life of abraham uh, it lists out some of the other things that happened so there's a mention of his wife sarah we all know that god promised abraham uh, that he will have a son in his old age he and his wife both of them were old um, and uh, he promised that they will have their own child and descendants right through that child but it required faith for abraham to believe this it required faith for abraham to uh, journey with god to receive the promise of a son was that journey easy it was not easy we will study about it when we learn the life of Ab- uh, about the life of abraham you know he he god gave a vision first of all you need to be walking in faith to receive a vision second to a uh, journey towards that vision you need faith okay to receive the manifestation of that vision you need faith so abraham has an exceptional faith journey that is why we call him the father of faith the father of faith because from the life of abraham we can learn many things about what faith really is okay so about abraham we've seen even sarah it says by faith sarah 
meaning in her old age she bore a son obviously it's not a common thing for somebody who is so uh, older in years to bear a child and uh, she was also you know sort of barren at that point and yet a miracle happened how was a miracle possible giving birth to a miracle starts with faith in the midst of an impossibility right how did the miracle happen it says by faith sarah so in the midst of an impossibility for us to um, see a miracle take place we need to have faith in god that is the testimony of sarah and then we go on to read uh, what are some of the other things in the life of abraham um you know he continued in faith out of whatever was promised to him some things took place in his lifetime but there are many other promises which were meant to be fulfilled later right in the generations to come and then we also see how abraham was faithful to god to even offer up his son isaac so think about this his dream was to um you know to have a son and uh, have his generation continuing finally after waiting upon the lord god gives him blesses him with a son called isaac right isaac means what laughter so isaac brought joy into abraham's life but then came a period of testing where god said can you sacrifice isaac what does the bible say the bible says that in verse 19 in verse 17 it says he offered up isaac meaning whatever god said he did it he was ready he woke up early in the morning took his son to the mountain he was ready to sacrifice his son but why why was he ready to sacrifice his son let's read verse 19 it says concluding that god was able to raise him up so think about the the um, faith of abraham what did he know god said he will bless me with a son and through the son i will have descendants on the earth so here is the son isaac god's promise is still not fulfilled but what is god telling him go and sacrifice isaac so in abraham's understanding he thought how can god kill isaac he cannot because the promise of god says that he will give me a generation through my son so god is asking me to sacrifice isaac i will do it because i know that god is the god of resurrection even if isaac dies he'll come back to life i believe that and with that confidence he took isaac went and was ready to sacrifice so you can imagine how much he knew god how he understood god you know how um his heart was filled with confidence about the goodness of god the greatness of god right so these are all things for us to think about uh, from the journey of abraham and then it goes on to say that by faith uh, you know like after abraham isaac is there isaac blessed jacob and esau concerning things to come so we won't get into the details of this but uh, just for us to understand that they kept believing god for the blessing upon their generations so how did they how did they speak uh, over the lives of their children for example isaac isaac has two sons jacob and esau so he blessed them by faith okay so faith is continuing whatever these people are doing they are doing because they believe right so even blessing the the um children they even they won't be here to see their children thriving but by faith they are blessing their children and saying that yes they will uh, do well and that shows faith in their hearts now let's read on we'll read the next section here let's go from verse 21 to verse 30 um who will read it diksha yeah, please go ahead by faith jacob when he was dying 
blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the, rep the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the breath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptian, attempting to do so, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho well fell, up, fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Okay, thank you for that. So we can see um, new names emerging. We can see Jacob, Jacob, uh, how he blessed his sons. And uh, we see how Joseph, when he died, when he was about to die, he mentioned to uh, the people how he must be buried. So all these things they did by looking into the future. They had no idea how the future would be, but they had the promises of God. They had the guidance of God um, regarding the way things would go. So based on all this, they made decisions. They uh, blessed people. They gave instructions and, you know, they uh, uh, passed on. Then we come to the life of Moses. Uh, Moses is another man of faith. We see that his parents had faith at a time when the young ones were being sacrificed they believed that their son could escape okay uh, and uh, we all know what they did they hid him uh, in a basket and they kind of you know uh, um, sent that basket towards uh, the, the palace and then finally moses ended up becoming pharaoh's uh, daughter's son and he was raised in the palace but in his heart, Moses was stirred up to do something for the people of God because he recognized where he came from. Uh, and we see the various accomplishments that took place through Moses, the way he led the people, the way he uh, guided the people out of Egypt and even uh, in the... Here the mention is more about being led out of Egypt. Okay, so uh, that is mentioned, but then he did it by faith. Okay, and uh, we see how the people, they passed through the Red Sea. That is also by faith, obviously. You, know, you cannot do something like that uh, just through your logical understanding. So people pass through the Red Sea by faith. But notice what it says. It says, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. What is the difference? The Red Sea parted, right? And uh, the, uh, the Israelites, they walked out safe and sound. Why did the Egyptians, who were also trying to walk through the Red Sea, why did they die? What is the difference? Was there any difference? Correct, correct. So faith is the that differentiator or faith is the element which the Israelites had, whereas the Egyptians did not have it. Now the Egyptians might have thought this is a formula. We can go, we can, you know, show a staff 
the sea will part we will walk through because that is what they observed moses do and the israelites do but even if they were to copy the principle it won't work because it's more than those actions it's more than the formula what is there behind the actions faith god will protect god will lead god will guide isn't it god will give us a better future that is the faith with which the sister israelites Tana, actually uh, sister can i say something yes yes sister getrude but even if the egyptians uh, they had faith they would not survive because it was not god, in god's plan no uh even if they had faith they would not survive they would not it? survive because it was god's plan that they will be drowned hmm even if they had faith in who faith in god yes they would not survive crossing the red sea hmm so when we say it was in god's plan um like uh, are you saying that based on some some verse uh, sister is there a is there an earlier verse because i'm not able to recall where it says that no uh, you said uh, egyptians had no faith so they got drowned correct but even if they had faith it was not in god's plan that they would be saved uh, okay i i get what you're saying i'm asking you when you say that it was not in god's plan uh, is there a scripture where we can see that it was not in god's plan for them to live uh sister because they were uh, i mean uh, they have uh, uh, i mean mistreated the israelites and god's plan was to save them and you know and show that he is the glory to egyptian till the end that he is the god in control right from the scriptures we understand okay so sister see uh, i do know that the scriptures promise deliverance deliverance for um the israelites yes. now egyptians if let's say one egyptian had faith okay um the reason why i am uh, asking you is because unless it says outright uh, outrightly that yes the egyptians all egyptians will die we can't make that comment and say it was in god's plan uh, for them to die even if they had faith they would die unless there is a scripture that says that's what god intended for every egyptian to die or the ones who were chasing the israelites to die so uh, at, at least i can't think of uh, a scripture like that i'll just come to the others there are some comments here where sanjay says if the egyptians had faith in god they would not have opposed moses they would have let the israelites free and um, a child says uh, exodus 14:13 and moses said unto the people fear ye not stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he will show you today for the egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever okay sure okay so based on that i think you could uh, you could say that the oppressing egyptians uh, it was that god said that they would not see them any more which uh, may imply that you know they would die okay so um, fine that that is established now this hypothetical scenario where a sister get out is saying what if the, if they had faith okay what if they had faith uh, now i really don't know i really don't know how uh, that that uh, can be assessed uh, so sister so, can i can i interrupt yeah, please go ahead please go ahead yeah uh, it bible clearly says that uh, they trusted in their horses in their chariots and they were unbelievers so uh, as we go by the word uh, they never had any faith in uh, uh, the heavenly father so uh, whether they had faith also they would have opposed uh, the people of god who has whom he has selected and redeemed so in this situation it is very evident that their faith was in their might in their horses in their uh, chariots 
and uh, so that is where we can uh, say that they never believed that you know they will be able to overcome the uh, heavenly father yeah so yes uh, uh, so sasta i agree with you so what uh, um, sister getru is saying is what has happened that we know okay they didn't have faith and that is why based on the scripture which uh, charles has posted they died now this is a hypothetical situation where we are saying we know what has happened but what if what if is a uh, it's an imaginary situation okay now if they had faith and thinking maybe the scripture which we see here i don't know if god would have said something different uh, reason is I'll, i'll tell you why i'm thinking along these lines because if they had faith to destroy the believers it is not uh, the, they would have had faith to do what they would have faith that they would overcome the israelites what would they have the faith in this scenario okay fine so uh, the way i have understood sister getrude's statement is faith in god for something positive if at all okay the reason is see you have people like ruth you have people like rahab they are all not from abraham's line they are not descendants of abraham's line and yet they expressed faith in god and because of which their lives their destiny was changed so there are times when god has um accommodated or he has accepted people outside of the jewish uh, line you got it but that is only in the situation when they had faith in god in the positive way so any other faith is not faith at all so when sister getrud said what if they had faith i was thinking along those lines so i hope uh, you know we we are just good with that discussion and that discussion didn't confuse anyone okay akil sister i didn't say that what if they had faith i said sister that even if they had faith it was in god's plan that they would not survive if they had faith it it was god's plan that they would not survive because they had oppressed the people of israel and god had already planned you know that the israel will go through the red sea and he will drown the egyptians okay so based on uh, this passage that we saw yes you know god did know that they will not survive all right sure okay hmm yeah yes exactly exactly so that's the whole point when we use the term faith itself yeah so see faith is not a stand alone that's what we discussed in our last class we can't just say that i believe and it'll happen that is not faith at all so whenever we use the word faith it is understood that we are talking about faith in god faith in the promises of god faith towards god so that is our understanding of faith just believing is not faith i we can believe anything we want okay so anyway so i guess uh, it was a uh, an interesting discussion there uh, so thank you all for that uh, we can move ahead so we talked about uh, moses and we talked about the israelites coming out of egypt did we see anyone else's name so far no but we read about jericho okay jericho uh, led by joshua the people led by joshua uh, saw the jericho wall fall down okay and we talked about this many times that this is also unusual how can something like this happen it's similar to the red sea parting only because of faith all right so let's um, move ahead uh, if there is any question you can ask me or if not we'll just read the last section so who is the person who will read the last section uh 
uh, Hebrews 11, 30, 31. By, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophet, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, became uh, valiant in in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yet and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about as sheepskins and goatskins, being des destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Okay. Thank you, sister. So as we can see here, there is a list of other names such as um, Rahab. Remember I told you Rahab, she's not from the line of Abraham, but only because of her faith, God blessed her. So when we say faith, it means faith in God. Okay. So she escaped. All the people in Jericho died, but Rahab escaped because of her faith in God. Then we see other names over here, such as uh, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. You know, each one, we can actually meditate on their lives and learn so much. You know, it'll be a sermon in itself, but we don't have that kind of time. But I would encourage you, you can go back and reflect on the lives of these people and see what makes them special. For example, Gideon. He was a very fearful man. He had no confidence. But when God called him, you know, and, and he was uh, uh, called a mighty man of valor, God called him for war. And he said, God, God, you call somebody else. I can't do it. But by faith, he went and he won the battle to protect his people. Similarly, each one has a story. Barak. You know, the, the uh, life of Deborah, how she, she instructed, uh, you know, Barak, how they killed the king of Sisera. So there is so much that you can learn about how they functioned in faith for the victory which they received. Samson, you know, even Samson, uh, the, the various victories that he had, it was by faith. Okay, of course, initially he carried on his faith and towards the end he tried to play with God and, you know, it really uh, destroyed his life. So Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, so each one has a story. So the Bible tells us there are great things that people have done by faith. What kind of great things? It says subdued kingdoms, meaning they have won wars. They have won the enemies, won over the enemies, right? They have subdued kingdoms. They have taken over kingdoms. Uh, it also tells us that they have worked righteousness or they have lived a life of righteousness how by faith in a sinful world how can one live a life of righteousness by faith we can live the life of righteousness then obtain promises uh, stop the mouth of lions so there are so many accomplishments but everything is possible by faith and this is a real reminder for us that people have walked by faith and god still is so happy about it. Uh, why not each of us also has a life of faith? Imagine if we were mentioned in this passage, what would God say about us? You know, what would God say about our lives? Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead. Let's take a break. Uh, there's a question, but we will take it after the break. Uh, all right. So 10 minutes break. Let's come back at 10 o'clock and continue our discussion. Thank you.